Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a DIY transmission fluid change on this 2016 Hyundai Tucson. Now this procedure will apply to pretty much any Tucson 2016 or newer and pretty much most vehicles across the Kia and Hyundai lineup. So whether you're looking at a Tucson, Santa Fe, Santa Cruz, Sonata, Sedona, Elantra, Sportage, maybe even Tellurides if they have a four cylinder or not. I don't know if this transmission is applicable to six cylinders, but definitely to most four cylinders. It will not apply obviously if you have a manual transmission or if you have a dual clutch transmission. This only applies to the automatic transmissions. So I'm pretty much going to walk you through how to do the transmission fluid change on this puppy and show you everything along the way. So let's get started. But if you enjoy doing DIY projects and want to stay informed and learn how to do new and different things all the time, hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new DIY project video that you'll want to learn about. All right, let's get started on this puppy. First of all, what you got to do is lift this puppy up, lift it up and have it level so you can get under it and the transmission is nice and level. I've already done that. As you'll see, I'll pan down and you can see I've already lifted it up. You can see right there, I have it lifted up. I have the back lifted up as well, so it's level and I'm gonna get under it right now and get started. All right guys, before we go down below under the vehicle, right now we're on top of the vehicle, we're in the engine bay, and I'm just pointing out that this contraption here, all this is the air box. The battery is right under there. But the fill plug for the transmission is gonna be under here somewhere, under the air box, and I'll show you that later on. So to be able to have easier access to it, you're gonna to need to remove the air box. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and get that out of the way so you're ready for when we come back up here. But the plug is right down there. It's not hard to get to, it's very easy once you Get rid of all this stuff in your way so go ahead and take care of that and then we're going to start working from the bottom all right guys so once you get under the vehicle you're going to find that you have a gigantic cover plate that covers everything under the drivetrain so you have no access to the transmission down here until this cover plate is removed so it's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts start taking them off and we'll come back as soon as i have this guy taken off all right guys that big pile of bolts is what you need to remove to get the underbody cover off your vehicle and there is the undercover body right there underbody cover right there then you have access to the transmission and right there that big black bolt that is the drain plug that we're going to use to drain out the transmission fluid and up here that other one i'll put an arrow showing what i mean is the level indicator which you'll check that later on to see if you have the proper fill level so clean things up a little bit before you get started so you don't get any contaminants in your transmission and let's get going. All right guys, so there is a drain plug for the transmission right there and to open that puppy up, you're gonna need a 24 millimeter socket. It doesn't matter if you have a regular one or a deep one, I just happen to have it in a deep size. So there you go, let's crack this puppy open and see where we go from here. There you go. Have your drain pan under there so you don't make a mess and let's get going. And there is no dipstick up above. You can open up the uh, drain plug up above to make it drain better before you start doing this. And there you can see some of the uh, material off the transmission. It's not too bad. Not really. Not a heck of a lot on there. We'll take a closer look in just a moment and there's your little crush washer right there. So let's let this drain out for a bit and we'll come back to it in a little bit. All right guys, and there is a look at the drain bolt and some of the magnetic material that comes off the clutches and stuff like that, that the bolt collects it. It's not really a huge amount. I wouldn't say it's really crusty. I've seen much worse. So this is not too bad. Let's clean it off. And you can see some of the uh, sludgy material, the buildup of the clutch material, the magnetic stuff, etc. Like I said, I have seen much, much worse on transmission magnets. This is not all that bad. So all transmissions are going to have some material come off, and there you have it. So I'm going to clean this off thoroughly. There you see the plug right there. I'm going to clean it off thoroughly, and then we'll put it back in. All right, guys, so I let this drain for a while, and it is done draining now, so we'll just wipe this off, make sure it's nice and clean, and we're going to be putting the bolt back in. I already cleaned it up thoroughly and have a new crush washer and everything for it, and we're going to put it back in right now. As you can see, nice and clean, ready to go. So we'll put this puppy back in right now before it continues making a bigger mess. And the torque specs on this from the manual is to tighten it to 31 foot-pounds. I forget what the newton meters are, but foot-pounds, 31 foot-pounds, which I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. Mine starts at 100. 31 is not a big deal. I would say that's probably a little bit more than hand tightened. So I'm going to tighten that up right now, and we'll go from there. 
as you saw, it wasn't really all that tight when I took it off to begin with. So let me take care of that right now. And click, there we go. So that's tighten enough right there. 31 foot pounds, there you go. All right guys, before we continue with the transmission refilling procedure, I wanted to introduce one step that I created on my own. This is my own step. You can exclude this if you want. You don't need to follow this at all. But I just came up with this as an extra safety measure, as an extra precaution. This is a clear container here that I cleaned out a while back. It's totally clean, rinsed out, dry, no contaminants in it whatsoever. And what I did was I took all of the transmission fluid that I just drained out and I put it in here to measure exactly what was coming out. Now since this transmission has no dipstick to it, there is a procedure where basically you fill it in and then you run the motor, get it up to operating temperature, whatever comes out of the overflow bolt that I already showed you earlier, basically you see how much comes out, if it's too much or too little, then you close it off, etc. But if you don't want to go through all that, if that's a bit complicated and you just want to make it simpler, the easiest way is to know how much you took in and that way you know how much you put back. So I measured right here exactly how much I took out of the transmission right now. And like I said, the transmission has to be nice and level so you get a nice even drainage uh, coming out of it. So I marked it right there. You can see the arrow where I marked the full level. And the easy way to do it is basically just to drain all this out of here, clean the container thoroughly, and then fill it back up with clean transmission fluid. Then you dump that back into the transmission and you should have exactly how much you took out, you put it back in, and there should be no mistakes whatsoever. And this way you don't need to worry about making a mistake where too much comes out, too much goes in, whatever the case may be. This is just a way to feel a little bit safer that you know exactly how much came out and you're putting it exactly back in the same amount. So if you want to follow this step, go right ahead and do so. If you don't want to follow it and you want to follow what the manual says, go ahead and do that instead. Like I said, what the manual says is basically you have, you fill up the vehicle, it should take about five quarts, fill it up and then run the transmission, run the vehicle, and just shift it through the gears. And then once it is up to normal operating temperature, you shut it off, you go back outside, you open up the overflow tube, and then anything that comes out, if it's too much, that means you overfilled it. If it's just a tiny little dribble, close it back up, and you're good to go. That is the procedure in a nutshell. So you can go ahead and follow that one instead if you choose to do so. So here we go, let's continue. All right, guys, well, now we're at the step where we can refill the transmission. And the transmission, I cleaned out all this area here, which was the air box. And getting that out of the way gives me access to this bolt right here, which is the refill plug. All you need is a 3 8 inch drive extension. And here is where a really long extension comes in handy. So I'm taking a really long extension, putting it right on there, right there. And it fits right into the hole. And it's not even really tight. You can just do it by hand, really. That's how tight it is. Because this one, to tighten it up, I think the uh, the specifications is only like about 8 to 10 foot-pounds. So it's really not tight at all. Again, just hand tighten. Nothing really that critical right there. So it's loose right there. I'm not going to take it off immediately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blow off this area here so nothing falls into there. And then we'll put a funnel on it and continue. All right, guys, so here is the plug that comes out of that hole. It is just a plastic plug. Be careful with it. That's where you insert the extension to get it out, the 3 8 inch drive. And it is plastic. Be careful with it. Just has a little O-ring on it. Don't go crazy on this thing. All right, so basically I inserted the funnel down in there. It's nice and secure. It fits very snugly in there. And uh, for transmission fluid... I am going to be using the Hyundai Automatic Transmission Fluid. This is not something you do all the time. I suggest you spend the extra money and get the original Hyundai as well. If you want to be cheap and you want to go out and get some other name brand out there that is not from the dealer, that's your choice. That's totally on you. I'm not going to take responsibility for that. I recommend you go with the factory one. It is guaranteed to give you the best results. And if you have any problems down the road, you can blame it on them, not on some other manufacturer. So there you go. Anyway, so I am following the procedure I indicated earlier where I put it all together in one container so it makes it easier just to pour it in there and I'm good to go. So here we go. I'm going from the big jug and I'm just going to pour it all in there. 
And basically the manual says that it should take about four quarts. I came up just a little bit shy of four quarts. So I'm gonna go ahead and afterward, once I run it for a little while, I'm gonna follow the procedure of seeing if uh, basically there's uh, too little coming out, none coming out, too much, whatever. And uh, I'm gonna see exactly if it needs more or not. What the manual may be indicating is that you put in four and then you run it to see if anything spills out and that's why they call it four instead of like three and three quarters or something like that. So that could be very well what they're indicating. So let's let, let that flow in there. And I did run some transmission fluid through the funnel first to make sure there was no contaminants in there. Since the funnel's been sitting around for a while, I don't do this every day. I wanted to make sure it was a clean funnel, everything clean going into the transmission, no dirty contaminants. And you can see the difference there in the color between the old one and the new one. It is much brighter red. And I did put the bolt down below. You saw me do it, so it is closed. It's not spilling out. Make sure you do that. You definitely don't want to start filling it until you put the bolt back and make sure you're not gripping all this stuff all over the floor. The reason I say that is I've seen people do that before. Sometimes they're in such a hurry, they start, uh, they drain it out, they forget about it, they start filling it, and it's like, oh my goodness, I forgot to close it. And there you go. That is the same exact amount that I took out, I just put back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it for a little bit and test it and see if anything spills out the other end and continue doing that. All right, so I put the plug back in down there and all you do is tighten it up now. And like I said, it is pretty much hand tightened. Like I said, eight to 10 Newton meters, something like that. Not really a lot. It wasn't all that tight when I took it off. So I would say don't get carried away. There you go, click, we're done. All right, guys, so there you can see there is the level indicator plug right there. I took that off, let a little bit drip out, indicating that it is full to the proper capacity. So that takes care of that. I didn't want to do it with the engine running and all that kind of good stuff. It gets really hot under here, very uncomfortable to work here. So I'm just showing you the aftermath once it's all done. Anyway, so this is done. We finished. This is the end of doing the transmission fluid change. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.